If you look up the word Hittites in the 1840s edition of the Encyclopaedia Britannica, you'll find only about eight lines of information. And almost all of that information is from the biblical records. Now, the Bible mentions these people some 40 times. And since this was the only place where the Hittites are mentioned, some scholars said the Bible was in error. Another blunder. Then in the late 1870s, Archibald Henry Sace began to compare various carved reliefs and hieroglyph-like pictorial inscriptions throughout the ancient ruins of the Turkish plateau. As a result of his research, he teamed up with archaeologist William Wright, and together these two men identified the ancient ruins near Bogoskoy in Turkey as the legendary Hittite capital of Atusa. Through field work, they found that the Hittite kings of Atusa had once ruled a vast empire that stretched from the Aegean Sea right across to the Euphrates River. Meanwhile, with the deciphering of the Egyptian hieroglyphs, scholars began to read what was written on the walls of the ancient Egyptian tombs, temples and palaces. And inside the temple of Ramesses II at Abu Simbel, they discovered that he had fought the Hittites. The carving depicted Ramesses II in his war chariot and tells the story of the Egyptian pharaoh defeating the Hittites. But what we now know is that Ramesses was lucky to have escaped death. It seems the battle was a dead heat. And at the front of the temple at Abu Simbel, you'll find a stele that commemorates the marriage of Ramesses and the daughter of the Hittite king Hattusili III, which sealed an alliance between these two monarchs. And you can even visit the Istanbul Museum in Turkey today and you'll see this tablet of the Egyptian Hittite peace treaty between Hattusili III and Ramesses II, which dates back to 1258 BC. So in light of what was unearthed by archaeologists, a great mystery was solved as to who the Hittites actually were. And again, it was seen that the information that's contained in the Bible was indeed historically accurate and a trustworthy source of information. The famous Misha stele, or Moabite stone, as it's often called, is on display at the Louvre Museum in Paris. It was discovered intact by Frederick Augustus Klein, an Anglican missionary at the site of ancient De Bon in Jordan in 1868. Sadly, the next year it was smashed by local villagers during a dispute over its ownership. A squeeze, which is a paper mache impression, had been obtained by a local Arab on behalf of Charles Clement Ganneau, and fragments containing most of the inscription, 613 letters out of about a thousand, were later recovered and put together. So what's so important about this theory? Well, let me first read you an interesting passage from the ancient biblical manuscripts. Now, Misha, king of Moab, was a sheep breeder, and he regularly paid the king of Israel 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. But it happened, when Ahab died, that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. Well, that's what the Bible says. Now let's read some of the Misha stealing. I am Misha, king of Moab. Omri, king of Israel, had oppressed Moab many days, but I have triumphed over his house. Now you can see why scholars were amazed and excited when they read what was on that stele. You see, it confirmed what the Bible said about the relationship between Moab and Israel at this time in history. And it was again very clear evidence to the historical accuracy of the ancient manuscripts that are found in this book, the Bible. You see, you can trust this book. It speaks the truth in its pages. Now, if you want to discover more of the mysteries archaeologists have unearthed, go to our website where you can learn more in our free Digging Up the Past course.